Inside the Classroom takes an in-depth look at one of Team Hardin County School's best teachers in action, featuring comments, class instruction, and insight inside the classroom. Um, I became a teacher because I wanted to work with children and I knew that education was one of the ways that we could um, work with children and I wanted to be able to make a difference in the lives of kids and knew that by being a teacher that their foundation is started in education. All right, boys and girls, are you guys ready? Yes. All right, today we are going to produce the sounds. We're going to do our consonants, our diagraphs, our blends, and our vowels. And then we're going to blend those together to produce words, okay? So what that means in kid terms says that I can produce the consonant sounds, the diagraph sounds, the blends, and the vowel sounds, okay? And we're going to blend those together. So I want to see finger tapping and pounding, okay? And All right. Our, our, the we are going to do our vowel sticks, okay? Are you ready? Three, two, one. N, N says N. N. Y, y says Y. y. CH says CH. Q U says, says Qu. W H says P says P. P. R says B R says Brr. S H says D R says F L says Fool. Good job. All right. We are going to get our bow sticks. Are you guys ready? Who inspired me to make this decision was Miss Rita Schultz was my kindergarten teacher at Sonora Elementary and she basically instilled a love for learning um, for me and I was able to do my student teaching with her um, in Hardin County Schools and it just kind of created the path for me to want to always just be a kindergarten teacher. Here we go. The sound is uh, uh. Three, two, one. The sound is ah, ah. Three, two, one. A says ah. Good. The sound is i, i. I know that one's confusing. Look, i. Three, two, one. I says i. Good. The sound is e, eh, e, eh, e. Eh. Three, two, one. The sound is aw, aw. Three, two, one. says Good. We're going to move to the syllable. Okay, you're going to hear a vowel sound. You're going to hear a consonant sound. Ready? The syllable is it, it, it. Three, two, one. says Good. The syllable is ag. Ag. Three, two, one. I yeah, it was ag. Ag. Good job. All right. The next one. The syllable is et. 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 Three, two, one. Yeah. Good. The syllable is ub. 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 Three, two, one. You said uh. Good. And our last syllable, the syllable is aug. Aug. Three, two, one. Uh. Good. Um, today you will see a modified version of the Orton Gillingham three part drill. And you will also see a comprehension lesson that the students were learning on CVC E words. We're going to do our words, and you're going to hear a CVC word. Okay, so we can finger tap those and pound. Are you ready? What is floating around on my screen right here? Fish. Fish. Ready? Everyone finger tap with me. Fish. 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 What vowel sound did you hear? F. I. 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 Three, two, one. I said Good. Put those down. Oh, what picture do we have? We have a basketball hoop. And what is this part where the basketball is going down? Uh, the net. The net. Ready, finger tap, net, ready, n, net, net. 
What vowel sound did you hear? N, e. Three, two, one. Very good. The word is, what word is this? It's a push pin. Finger tap with me. P, I, N, pin. P, I, I, P, N, pin. Three, two, one. Good, and I know that one's tricky. Now we have an ink pen. Pen. Let's finger tap that one. P N pen. Find that vowel stick. And that one's tricky. Three, two, one. E says eh. So we hear p n pen. That's okay. E and I is very tricky. Uh, Ms. Nethery is an effective teacher because, first and foremost, she puts students' needs first. Um, regardless of what she's doing, planning a lesson, um, looking at behavior charts uh, as serving as a mentor, she puts students' needs first. Um, at the same time, she wants to challenge them and make them feel um, proud of their work. So now what we're going to do is we are going to get into the meat of our lesson, okay? We are going to identify the long vowel sounds in a word, okay? Then we're gonna blend those sounds together. Are you guys ready to see which ones we're gonna do? I said the long vowel sounds. What is the rule when you see the magic E at the end? It makes its name. It makes it say its name. Talk to your partner. What does magic E, what is that rule? All right, so Jackson, what is our rule for magic E? The E makes the, uh, yes, the E makes the vowel say its name. So if you see the E at the end of the word, it's going to make that vowel say its name, okay? Ms. Delery, um makes class fun so because for letting us um, play games and letting us play with being no daubers. Ms. Delery makes stuff fun by doing, um, like, goodness in groups and stuff and helping us when we get stuck. And she's really sweet and nice. So Miss Nether makes learning fun by like having fun games and breaks it up into little tiny pieces that way we understand it better. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So pay attention because right now, do we have a magic E here? No. no. So it's going to try to trick you. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Let's finger tap. Let's get our fingers ready. Ready? Go. Uh, Good. Let's add it. Ready? Good. Ready? Go. P in. Ready? Go. P in. Good. Ready? S thin. Change it. Add the E. Good. Ooh, we have a what at the beginning? We have a digraph. S-H. Ready? Go. Sh. Good. Ready? Go. Yube. Good. Uh oh. Oh, I couldn't trick you. Eve. Good job. Ready? Go. B. Own. Good. Very good job, boys and girls. First and foremost, in her role as our reading support teacher, uh, she has embraced the Orton Gillingham training that we have had uh, over the past few years. Um, so she's very explicit. Uh, with the way she teaches. She uses the visual cues, she uses the um, hand motions with the students, and it's not just at the beginning to, till they get it, she uses it throughout consistently, and I think that contributes a big part to the success as to why her students are successful, is she's consistent with those strategies. Um, other best practices, she's very versed in thoughtful ed, so she mixes thoughtful ed education um, strategies in with her Orton Gillingham. She uses a lot of technology, um, so just all of those combined together uh, proved to be very effective. So we're going to play our little threes a crowd. Are you ready? Now you have to whisper to your partner. Are you ready? I want you to tell me which word does not belong in our threes a crowd and why. So make sure no one hears you whisper to your partner. Twos, two, and two. Ready? Our word is, what's the first word? Up here real quick. Ready? What's our first word? Bite. Bite. Kite, 
Bat. Which one doesn't belong? Talk to your partner. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Bat. Oh, shh, whisper, whisper. Titus, which one does not belong? Bat. Why do you think bat? Oh. Let's go back. Hold on. It didn't. It was not ready for Miss Nethery. Why do you think bat does not belong? <laughs> It has our magic E. And it has a T and a T and yeah. And then that one doesn't even have like a I or a T. Yes, it has a different vowel T. sound, doesn't it? And you said yeah. even that I T E, I T E, that these rhyme. There's another word that doesn't belong. Okay, let's move on. Are you ready? Let's do one more. Ooh, ready? Let's listen to these. Shine, shop, mine. Talk to your partner of which one does not belong. And then give me a thumbs up. Which one does not belong? Be a whisper. All right. Annabelle, which one does not belong? Which one? You want to say shop does not belong? And can you tell me why it doesn't belong? It doesn't have our magic E. Hold on, hold on. No, you're excited. So, do you guys agree with her reasoning? I, have I agree, I can but do a, I heard I can do a different way. you can do it a different way. Tell me a different way. Which the, one? The the these are the one has the magic key. Does it does it has a um, This one has the short I, and this one has oh. the short O. So that was a different reason why. You are correct. Is there another reason why? Who thinks they can tell me another reason of why? It has magic Hold on, let's raise our hand or thumbs up. Davin, what's another reason? Mine. Mine doesn't belong? Why does mine doesn't belong? Because it doesn't have a, a blend. Not a blend. Think about a this. Diagraph. diagraph. Good. The diagraph, it says shh. And both of those have a diagraph. Oh, Good speaking. job. Any other ones that you guys saw? Ready to move on? Some of the best practices that I use in my classroom is the um, OG um, three-part drill. I use the Kagan structures um, for engaging the students. I also use thoughtful ed strategies, um, three's a crowd. And we were able to fluently read the text and we were able to answer questions, right? I'm gonna show you what we did yesterday. Remember this book? Yeah. Okay, so Mike at the skating rink, we were able to find all of our CVC e-words. Remember that? And we highlighted them yellow. So I'm going to show you all of our words that we found. Do you see those? Hold on just a second. Look at all of our words. But guess what we didn't get to? Were we able to answer our questions yet at the end? No. And so what Miss Nethery did, we were able to put it all on one page. Look at this. I was able to find it all on one page and so what we're going to do here they are and they're all highlighted the ones that you found mike and the skating rink we highlighted all of our cbc e words and now we're going to be able to go back and we're going to read it again because i know titus wasn't here so we're going to read it again and then we're going to go through and we're going to be able to find all of our questions in our story and you're going to be able to show me that you guys can fluently read and answer questions sound good Thumbs up if you're ready. You good? Okay. Miss Ellery helped me uh, learn so that way she can uh, let me, help me read and um, make, let me do my best. I enjoy most about our class is that um, she helps us when we get stuck on a word and she always tells us to go back and reread the passage and helps us find it all the time. What I enjoy the most about Miss Nethery's class is being here to see her because like Erilyn said, I've I've known her since kindergarten and it's just like making more memories in here with her. Okay. And we're gonna start reading Mike and the skating rink. Can you put your paper up here, Ollie, for me? Good job. All right, everyone get your pointer finger ready, because we know when we read, what are we doing? Mike Following Mike along. Red. Ready? All right, let's read fluently together. If we stay together, that's gonna to help us to fluently read at the same pace. And remember, if there's excitement, we have to show expression, right? Okay, ready? Fingers yeah. ready? 
Ready? Go. My rode his bike home. He had to make cupcakes to take to an event. He was going to skate at a rink. The cupcakes had to bake. When they were finished, his mom drove him to the rink to skate. All right, we're on the next little paragraph. Ready? When they got to the rink, Mike, Mike said, look, look, Mom, I see my entire class. He got out and ran to see them. Ms. Nethery enhances the staff at our school uh, most, I think, because of her positive attitude. Um, she's very positive in the way she thinks. Again, very student-oriented, puts students first. Um, again, she's also a, a resource um, to many teachers not only in the area of reading, but in the area of technology. Um, so I, I feel like she has a pretty much an open door policy that anybody can come in and uh, ask her a question and she's gonna help regardless. Hello, said Mike. This is going to be a fun time for us all. Okay, we're at the next little paragraph, ready? Finger hop, good. They all wanted to play a game, so they came up with a rule. They had to skate around the rink three times and not fall to win a prize. Ready? They're at the part where it says they. Ready? They all began to skate. One by one they fell as they skated around the rink. There was five children left that did not fall. So we're at the skating rink, right? Why do you think the entire class is there? Uh, because they do. Maybe, yes, maybe it's their birthday, you think, maybe? All right, let's get right here where it says to see. Everyone put your fingers right here where it says to see. Look where Miss Nethery is right here. It's okay. Right here. Ready? To see. Ready? And we're going to hop each word. Hop with me. Stay with me, and we're going to think hop. Remember? Ready? Go. To see who will win, Mike said, let's see who can skate fast. The one who gets around the rink first without falling will win. Mike asked his mom to start the race. They all got in a line at the start. Miss Delery, um makes class fun so because for letting us um, play games and letting us play with bingo daubers. Um, she helps us succeed um, like when we do our testing. She helps us and she makes sure that we get good grades on it and everything. Um, Miss Nether helps me um, do my best by um, just taking a minute just to explain it just for me and breaks it up into little tiny pieces. One, two, three, go, yelled his mom. The five took off. Mike was one of the five children in the race. They all went so fast, but two fell. The last three made a mad dash to the finish. One fell, so that left just Mike and Kate. All right, everyone go to where it says Kate. Ready? <clears throat> Read loud for me. Ready? Yep, ready. Kate came in just in front of Mike. Kate won the race and the prize. Mike said to Kate, good job, Kate. It was a good race. They all had a cupcake that Mike made for them. At last, it was time to go home. Mike said with a big smile, thank you all for such a fun day. So in our story, we have a lot of questions that we have to answer, okay? Yes, 
Ready? So I'm going to give you this little piece of paper and we are going to try to find all of our answers in our passage. And guess what Miss Heathery has up here on the board for us? Do you want to see? Yeah. I have the passage for us to answer, okay? I'll get it in just a second, but I'm going to get your crowns passed out too, okay? So I want everyone to take one red crown. I have to say the greatest joy that I have in the classroom is being able to build a relationship with the students, um, really getting to know them, so that way they then um, can trust me with their learning. And once I've gained that trust with them, they know that they can um, begin to be readers and uh, just have more confidence in themselves. All right, does everyone have a red crown? Yes. Okay, perfect. So in our first question, here's what we're gonna find. And you can look up here with me, okay? And I'm gonna find it with you. But this is being able to use our passage to find the answers, okay? Are you, you don't have to have that page. You just have this one, okay? Our first question said, what did Mike make when he got home from his bike ride? Cupcakes. Cupcakes, so we all agreed that he made cupcakes, but I have to find where? So ready, I want you to take your red crown with me. And it said, Mike rode his bike home. He had to make cupcakes to take to an event. Can you guys underline that? He had to make cupcakes to take to an event. It's in our first line. That's where we found our answer. He had to make cupcakes. Good job. Can I go right where at? Right here, ready? He had to make cupcakes. I'll leave. Okay. So now I want you to put up your red crown in front of you and we're gonna go to our blue crown. So if you will pass out the blue crowns, leave your red there, pass it around. And we are gonna look for the question. We are gonna look for the question and the answer that says, we're gonna use our blue crown to find this answer. It says, where did Mike and his mom go when they finished baking? So talk to your partner, where did they go after they finished baking the cupcakes? Thumbs up when you're ready. Where did they go? So think about where did they go after they made the cupcakes? Where did they go? Devin, where did they go? They went to the skating rink. So are you ready? Take your blue crown. I'm gonna find where it says he was going to skate at the rink. The cupcakes had to bake. When they were finished, his mom drove him to the rink to skate. So that last line right here says that they went to the rink to skate. Yes, very good. It is right there, very good job. Went to the rink to skate. Look at you guys getting those answers, good. Why will she be remembered? I think, again, in her role as the uh, reading support teacher, she's working with a lot of students that are struggling with reading, and reading success is tied very much to self-esteem. And I have seen over this year these students that have come in feeling kind of defeated or kind of down and saying, I can't read, I can't read. And because of the intervention she's been able to provide and the quality instruction she's been able to provide, these students, the self-esteem, you can tell, has just increased. And so she's given those students the, the belief in themselves, and they feel proud of themselves again, and they're excited to be reading, because that's why every student usually comes to school. That's their main goal in kindergarten. They want to learn how to read. And uh, she's definitely uh, been able to do that for them this year. It says, who did Mike see when he got to the rink? So we have to go to the next paragraph. <gasps> Tell your partner, who did he see? So who did he see at the whole class? And you have to find where it says the entire class. All right, I see some thumbs up. Annabelle, who did he see? The entire class. And that is in our next line. It says, when they got to the rink, Mike said, look, mom, I see my entire class. You guys can underline entire class because that's your answer. Ready, and the next whole line. My entire class, yes. Good job, my entire class, good job. You got it, yes, uh-huh, my entire class. We now are gonna get a purple, and I don't know if Miss Nethery has a purple, but I will underline it and make it look as perfect as we can. I'm gonna do the blue, 
and kind of make it look purplish, okay? So it says, are you ready? Here we go. What did the class decide to do at the rink when they were skating? What did they decide to do? Talk to your partner. What did they decide to do at the skating rink? What did they decide to do? Do you remember what they were going to do? Were they going to, right here where it says they were going to what? Play, yes, play a game. Good. Titus, what were they going to do? They were playing a game. Yes, what all students want to do, right? They're going to play a game. So if you look in our next paragraph right here, it says they all wanted to play a game. And yours is going to be purple. So make it purple. Miss Heather is going to see if this will work. Blue and red make what? Purple. All right. All right, the next question. You guys are doing fantastic. Is pink? Are you ready? I will remember Miss Nethery because she helps me read. Um, she'll be a teacher that I remember because I had her as a kindergarten teacher, and now she's my one teacher, and she helps me out a lot now. Miss Nethery would be a teacher that I would remember by her teaching and how she teaches us and how, how like nice and sweet she is and just the caring person that she is. It says how many class members were left that did not fall? Ooh, so how many did not fall? Kate and, Kate and Mike. So there were two left. So we have to find out where it says that there was two left. Okay, now here's the thing. Before they started the race, there were a number, there was the whole entire class. Do you guys remember that? But then it tells us right here, this is tricky because at the end, Mike and Kate are left. But it tells us in our last paragraph, or our last sentence of our paragraph, there were five children left that did not fall. So the whole class was playing, but then they got it down to five. Okay, so let's... It will get down to Mike and Kate, but that's at the question at the bottom, okay? So if you look right here, it says there were five children left that did not fall, okay? So go ahead and underline that one. Well, think about, look, here was our purple, okay? And it's at the end of that last paragraph, okay? Yes, and you got it. There were five, yeah, that's it. Good job. Um, yes, you got fall, and so the five children. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. five children that did not fall. Perfect, yes. Okay, so our next question said, how did they decide who the winner of the game was? How did they decide? So talk to your partner. No, not me. Talk to your partner. Talk to your partner. How did they decide? How did they decide? When former students come by for a visit, it um, really puts a smile on my face because you know that you've made some kind of impact on their life. Um, I've had students come back out of high school to come see me when I was their um, kindergarten teacher or their second grade teacher. And I also just have the students that are in our building um, who are in fourth and fifth grade that come back to still see me. So it just means a whole lot because you know you've made some kind of impact on their education. I love her because she's really sweet and nice and she always will help us. Like, like I said, she's really nice, she's kind, sweet, and she helps us whenever we need help. As Heartland's been open for 14 years, this is our first time we've had an Excel uh, teacher winner, so we're very proud and excited of that, and we're very proud of Miss uh, Nethery as well. Teachers are so important because um, we are the foundation that the students are getting in their life um, when learning to read or learning to do math. So it takes um, teachers to build them up to be what they want to be in a career.